I'm Samurai Sam. Today I'm going to go through all my Game Boy Color games, or at least try to get through as many of them as I can in one of these videos. And I'm going to say a little thing about each one. Now, Game Boy Color is kind of a weird system because it's like sort of like a brand new system. It has its own games that only worked on Game Boy Color, but it also has a bunch of games that also worked on original Game Boy that you could sort of think of as Game Boy games. Like the line between what's Game Boy and Game Boy Color can be like blurry for some who don't look into it. So like, for example... Um, like, Pokemon Gold and Silver work on Game Boy, but they are considered Game Boy Color games. Like, the box says Game Boy Color. That's my definition. If the box of the game said Game Boy Color on it, then I consider that Game Boy Color. Uh, like, Pokemon Crystal, though, only works in Game Boy Color. That is definitely, no questions asked, a Game Boy Color game. So, um, it's it's kind of weird. Like, it's it's like the same system, but with color, but, like, it is really its own system. It's, 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 it's weird. Um, but that's not what this is about. This is about Game Boy Color games, and we're going to go through them. Um, uh, I think I probably said something about this one in the Game Boy video by accident, but, um, I'm going to pull this one out first. It's, uh, Dragon Warrior Monsters. Now, this is one of those, like, monster capturing and raising RPGs, much in the vein of Pokemon. I haven't played too much about of it, so I can't, like, give my own opinion. Uh, I say that way too much. You know that already. You've watched these videos probably. You're probably me. I'm probably talking to myself right now. Game & Watch Gallery 3. Now, this is fantastic. This is a collection of, um, the Game & Watch games, like, um... Game & Watch was, as for those of you who don't know, like a really old uh, Nintendo property that started in 1980. They were handhelds. Uh, the first ever D-pad in video game history was on a Game & Watch system. And they were like fairly simple games that used that like LCD screen with like very primitive graphics. I actually have one over here. Why, 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 not, why not take this opportunity to show you what my Game & Watch actually is? Uh, so I can just take it out here. This is a Game & Watch. This is uh, Turtle Bridge, and I believe this game, Turtle Bridge, is on Game & Watch Gallery, Gallery 3. Like, you, it has, like, these uh, monochrome graphics or whatever. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but, like, you press left and right and stuff. They're primitive games where you try to get a high score, and they're fun. And so this one has a bunch of old Game & Watch games on them, and it also has, like, modernized versions of them with Mario characters that changes things up a little bit. And it's fun. A lot of fun. And uh, fun games to go for high scores and stuff. Uh, and, uh, yeah, a very good compilation of them with, like, not just a lazy port, like, actual effort put in. And I don't have Game & Watch Gallery 1 and 2. Like, I'm not sure if they're worth it, though, because I have 3 and 4 on GBA, which we'll get to eventually. Uh, here we have, uh, Metal Walker. Fun fact, I used to have this game factory sealed, but I sold it. Uh, this, I want to say, is an RPG, but I think it has, like, action-ish battle screens. I don't remember. Like, this game has a lot to do with, like, mechs. And it's by Capcom, or at least published by Capcom. I don't know if Capcom developed it, but um, this is kind of an obscure game, but considered a good game by those who've played it. But, like, I just haven't played, played it yet. I should play more games. I really should do that. Uh, let's see what else, what else we got here. Um, here's uh, Pokemon Gold, uh, but I'm going to talk about Pokemon Silver uh, when I get to that one. So I'm not going to talk about that one yet. Uh, Pokemon Trading Card Game. Uh, I love this game. This is a... This basically... So, the Pokemon trading card game was enormous when it first came out, but, like, most of the people who collected the Pokemon cards when they first came out as, like, the part of that first wave of Pokemon uh, really just, like, wanted the cards to have them, like, just, like, for collectability or just, like, to own them and, like, show them off and, like, talk about the Pokemon. But there was actually a trading card game. Like, like there, there were rules to the game and everything. And this uh, is a way to play that game. It's probably one of the best ways to play the actual trading card game now since, like... Or at least the retro trading card game, I should say. Obviously, the Pokemon trading card game is alive and well now. But, like, this is, like, early days of Pokemon trading card game. This contains the first three expans expansions, Base, Jungle, and Fossil. And um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, kind of easy, but, like, that's okay. Uh, like, you play this game, you start out with, like, a small number of cards, and then, like, you beat opponents, and you, you, you win booster packs, and you expand your collection, and you can build decks, like, in real life. Um, not every real-life card is in this game, but, like, most of them are. Like, most of the important ones are... Uh, and some are in this game that aren't even in real life. Like, there are some cards you can only get in this. So, um, this is... Actually, they made a sequel to this, which we'll be getting to later. But, um, yeah, great game. Uh, Revelations the Demon Slayer. This, in Japan, this game is known as Last Bible. There was actually a Game Gear version, I believe. And this is, uh, the first ever... I, wait. No, this is probably the second ever Megami Tensei-related game to be released in the U.S., um, I think the first one was Jack Bros and Virtual Boy, which I don't have, and, uh, it's an RPG, and I just don't know that much about it, I'm afraid. Like, I, you know, if you've played, like, Atlas's Megami Tensei-style RPGs, you probably know what to expect, I'm guessing, but I'm not an expert, I'm afraid. Well, I mean, 
I am sort of an expert. Like, I've played several Megami Tensei games. Not, like, really in the main series. More Persona, but I've played, like, Digital Double Saga. I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent. You know, it's one of those games. Survival Kids. This is a game by Konami. I, guess, I don't know if Konami developed it or just published it, but this game involves, like, you're on an island and you're trying to survive. It's, like, a top-down kind of Zelda perspective, but I don't think it's very Zelda-like in gameplay. It's, like, about trying to survive. And, like, I think it's about, like, resource gathering and stuff. And um, it seems pretty cool from what I've heard of it. Uh, I'll give it a shot sometime. I have not yet. I'd love to talk about games that I actually can talk about when I get to them. Tetris DX. I mean, what more can be said about Tetris? It's just like, you know, a version of Tetris with like more modes and stuff. And it's Tetris. It's awesome. What more needs to be said? This was like one of the first Game Boy Color games, which was fitting because, you know, why not start with that when Game Boy started with uh, regular Tetris? Okay, now we're getting into the games that only work on Game Boy Color. So, most typical Game Boy Color carts look like this. The ones that only work on Game Boy Color. Like, they'll have, um, uh, right here, this, this, like, juts out. It's concave. Uh, whereas before, it would, like, actually went curved inward. That's a, and it's transparent like this. That's a clear symbol that this only works on Game Boy Color. Here we have Bomberman Max Blue Champion. Uh, there's also a red version. I don't know, like, what the differences are. Um, and, I mean, it's a Bomberman game, but I can't tell you too much about it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I hate saying that stuff, but... I have to. Like, there's nothing else I can say. Uh, Deja Vu 1 and 2. Uh, Deja Vu uh, 1 and 2 were... Well, Deja Vu 1, at least, was on the NES originally in America. But, like, these are adventure games, kind of PC-like, where, like, you're um, you're gathering clues and you're, like, in in inspecting different places and trying to, like, use items in different places to, like, solve puzzles and stuff. And uh, it's one of those games, and supposedly it's pretty good, uh, but say it with me. Like, I need to play it. <laughs> I haven't played through it yet. Here's one game that I unfortunately have played through, and that's Diva Stars Mall Mania. Like, uh, my sister, one of my sisters got this game from one of her friends, and so it wound up in my lap for free because I'm the, the video game guy. And, um, yeah, this is a Diva Stars cash-in. Uh, like, Diva Stars was, like, obviously, like, a toy line back in the day. And um, this is, like, a series of mini-games that you have to go through a sequence of, like, four times, and then they're very, 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 very easy and um, there's a lot of, like, diva talk, like, what's up, girl, glam girl, that is so rad, like, 90s girl talk, I guess, and, um, yeah, I don't recommend it, definitely not. Even if you have, like, a, a young daughter, I would say, like, get her something that's more of an actual game. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Legendary Super Warriors. This is one of the first, like, uh, Dragon Ball games that actually got released in America. Like, not the first, but, like, probably, like, the third, fourth, or fifth, something like that. Um... And this is actually, like, a, a card-based, like, turn-based turn combat game. I don't know if you'd call it an RPG, but it's, like, definitely a card-based, has a card-based combat engine. And I've heard it's really good, actually. Um, and it follows, like, I think it follows through, like, the Sa the Saiyan saga all the way through the, the end of the Frieza saga, but I could be wrong. And, um, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to check it out because I, I haven't played it yet. Ooh, we got our first import of this video. Here is... Um, uh, Ganbare Goemon something something dynamites and like you know if you've played Goemon I've talked about Goemon a few times already because we've had some of those games but like it's it's a side scrolling mostly side scrolling action game with Goemon and friends and these games tend to be fun and um, whimsical and humorous and I can't say too much about this one this, it's actually pretty rare it's like this game doesn't come up on eBay terribly much and I was pretty happy when this came up for a reasonable price um, it's not crazy expensive but it's not like cheap either. And so, um, at some point, I'm going to have to check it out and, like, say more about it. Because there's really actually not that much info on the internet about this game. Here's, um... Actually, let me just pull this weird cartridge out already. This is Pokemon Pinball, which is a game where, like, um... I mean, it's a pinball game, obviously. Uh, it's, it's kind of a weird cartridge because you can put it in a battery and, like, it rumbles, I think. But, like, when you play this game, like, Pokemon will appear and you have a chance to catch them by, like, I think hitting them a few times or something like that. And you can catch, like, all 150 in this game. And I never played it too much, but it seems cool. Yeah, I mean, like, I actually didn't have it back in the day when I was Pokemon crazy. Oh, um, where am I? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here's, uh, uh, Hamtaro, Ham Hams Unite. Hamtaro was a show that I, uh, watched on Toonami, uh, pretty often back when it first started airing in the U.S. And I enjoyed it. It was a cute little charming show. It was never one, like, one of my favorites. Um, but, like, um, I don't know. I, I've heard some of the games are good. Like, I picked this one up. I think this involves, like... I think it's kind of like puzzle solving, like you talk to the hamsters and like you have to talk to them differently and like use different like hamster code words to like solve puzzles and like figure things out. I could be way off on that. Like I don't know how much of the, like there's this is like mini games or whatever, but yeah, I'm, I'm terrible at this. I'm, I need to play more of my games. 
I say that over and over and over and over again. Magi Nation. So this was, um, this is based on like a actually, so there was a real life trading card game Magi Nation for a short while. And I don't know if the trading card game was based on this or if this is based on the trading card game. And I think there was even like a TV show that was made for this. At least it was planned. I don't know if it was released. But um, this game is actually pretty obscure, but also reviewed pretty highly. Like, people say this is a good game. Uh, I watched the intro, and it's actually pretty humorous. And, um, yeah, it seems like a cool game. I'll have to check it out sometime. Like, I think this is, like, kind of like a sort of a Magic the Gathering-esque kind of game. Like, competitive card game. And, obviously, there's, like, a story behind it in, in this cartridge and stuff. I call it a cartridge. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing right now. Um, but uh, Imagination seems like a cool game. And it's cheap. Uh, probably worth picking up if you're into that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot someday. Uh, Mario Golf, um, this is actually very different from Mario Golf on the uh, 64. As is common, we're going to see, uh, I'll, I'll get to more of these. I can, you know what, I'm going to pull this one out too, because it's sim very similar. I have similar things to say. Mario Tennis on Game Boy Color. So Camelot, what Camelot did with their Mario sports games that they developed is they made like the more regular ones for, on the console. And these are a little different. Like in these you play as like human characters uh, that like like aren't, don't look like they belong in the Mario universe. And you kind of go through like, almost an RPG-ish story single-player campaign where, like, you play tennis or golf, and the more you play, the more you can level up your stats and, like, you can choose how where, where they're allocated. And then eventually you can use the transfer pack with these and actually import your, your leveled-up character into the 64 game, which is a pretty neat feature, which I've, I've just never really used. I'm personally, like, not super into these two games in particular. Like, I've, I've given them a shot... Well, actually, I haven't played too much Mario Golf. I played some Mario Tennis on Game Boy Color. People actually say it's really good for what it is, but, like, I just found it a little bit... I don't know. I, f I got bored easily with it. Um, maybe I'll play it some more. Like, I, I do kind of, like, want to, like, play a tennis game, actually, at some point soon. But I might play, like, Super Tennis instead or something, or Smash Tennis. I don't know. There's a lot of tennis games. Uh, and I'm not sure which one I really want to play. Uh, Monster Rancher Explorer. Now, this game's really obscure. You're, like, like, hardly anybody says anything about this game. But um, what's interesting about it is that it's actually not, like, really a Monster Rancher game at all. It's actually a Solomon's Key game. Like... This game it has the gameplay of Solomon's Key on the NES. I'm not kidding. And um, so that's pretty interesting. I don't know how it stacks up to Solomon's Key, if it's better or worse. But um, I think it's an interesting little obscure game uh, that uh, I'll give it a shot. You know, I'll probably play Solomon's Key first and then play this and just see how they compare. And maybe I'll, I don't know, maybe make a video or just like say some stuff on social media about it sometime. Like so people know. Pokemon Puzzle Challenge. Um, this is a Game Boy version of Tetris Attack slash Pokemon Puzzle League. And I absolutely adore that game, so this is great. Uh, not the ideal version of the game to play now, but um, it has uh, it has like it features uh, Gen two characters and gym leaders and stuff. Yeah, unlike Pokemon Puzzle League on sixty four, which only had like Kanto stuff, like Gen one stuff. This actually has stuff from Johto and it has like music from Gold and Silver, I think. And um, yeah, it's a great game. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't have too much else to say about it. I remember this being really hard back in the day. Maybe if I played it now. Maybe if I played it now, it would be different. Um, playing against the computer is weird because you don't actually see their uh, stack. Like, they have a life bar. So, like, I don't know if it actually works differently if the computer, like, cheeses you out that way. Oh, I just realized I skipped over because it looks like a regular Game Boy cartridge. I skipped over. Give me a second here. Wait. Where is it? What the heck did I do with my Pokemon Silver? I don't have the box for it, do I? It must be somewhere else. Um... Where did my Pokemon Silver go? This is this is annoying me right now. Um, I've got po po Wait, what is? That's not Pokemon Silver. I apologize for the little delay here. Apparently, I have a missing in action Pokemon Silver. I don't know what to do about that. Uh, is it? Could I have possibly? I don't have the box for it, right? No, because I have. That's the crystal version. Did I bring Pokemon Silver over here? Is it, like, in this Game Boy? No. No. Oh, you know what? It might be in the original Game Boy. Yeah, I left it in my original Game Boy, because I actually fired up Pokemon Silver recently to see how it would look playing on the original Game Boy. But anyway, here we go. Pokemon Silver version. So, obviously, this is Gen 2. This was the first, like, big new Pokemon game we got after Red, Blue, and Yellow. And the um, story behind me getting this game, on the way home from church, my family used to always get bags of chips on the way home. It was a nice tradition, and I saw in the back of chips, there was like a contest. It was like you send in, I think it was like two, maybe three barcodes from the back of like the chip bags, and you have a chance to win a new copy of Pokemon Silver, and uh, or gold, I guess. And, um, 
Yeah, it wasn't a thing with like one winner. Apparently, like hundreds or thousands of people had a chance to win. And guess what? I won. Like, like just one day in the mail, it came in the mail, and I was like, "Are you kidding me? I got free Pokemon Silver!" Like, I was psyched. That was amazing. And because um, like my parents, I mean, they would have eventually got it for me, but like they didn't buy me new games really that often. Um, so, oh boy, I just played this game to absolute death. A um, few hundred hours in this, I completed the Pokedex, and like just Pokemon Silver and Gold were so good. Like they they took. Gen 1 was, like, like, red, blue, and yellow are great, um, but they are definitely, like, a little rough around the edges. There's a lot of glitches, um, like, the graphics aren't the best, um, the gameplay mechanics, like, the game isn't that balanced. They did so much to polish up the formula and, like, improve the gameplay and just add a lot of cool new stuff, and boy, does it ever show, like, these games are fantastic. Like, um, well, we'll get to Pokemon Crystal eventually, I'll talk about that, but, um, yeah, just, I mean, about as good as it gets on the Game Boy Color, really, like... Pretty much the pinnacle, that Gen 2 of Pokemon. Um, here we got Shantae. So this was actually published by Capcom, but developed by Way Forward, like an indie studio. I called it Capcom. What am I doing? So uh, Shantae is um, not really a Metroidvania, but um, kind of like along the veins of the um, Monster World series, like games where... Uh, kind of like Demon's Crest, even like not not exactly like Demon's Crest, but like games where there's like a few different levels, kind of. Well, in, in Shantae, they aren't levels. Like it is, they all, all are all interconnected by like a, a main overworld and stuff. But there's a bunch of different levels, and like you gain power ups as you go. In this one, you get you get to transform into different animals. And, like you can access more of the game with the more power ups you have, and it's a lot of fun going back to old places and like seeing where you can get where you can get before. This is this one is a little more linear than like the little more straightforward and less like that than like the sequels to Shantae, but this is a pretty cool side scrolling uh I guess action adventure game. Um it's not too RPG ish. It's it's got like money and towns and stuff, but it's not like you don't level up or anything. But like you get you um this game's really good, like the the graphics are great for Game Boy Color and the music's good. Um it's just a really it's a solid game. The sequels definitely are well after the second game, even, like, like there was a huge step up in quality. Like, Shantae 3 and 4 are both fantastic games that, like, really outshine this one. But um, this is still a really good game. You can get this for cheap on 3DS Virtual Console, and I recommend that. Uh, here we have um, Snoopy Tennis. So this came out actually around the same time as Mario Tennis. And, um, of course, it has penis characters. And this is actually considered a pretty good Tetris game. Tetris, I called it. Tennis game, uh, from what I can tell, well, what I've read and what I can tell, it got reviewed very well in the Nintendo Power issue I got way back in the day, uh, back when I was subscribed to Nintendo Power, and, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's tennis, and it's done well on Game Boy Color. If that's your sort of thing, it might be worth checking out, because it's, a uh, cheap, not really rare or terribly sought after. Let's see. Okay, here's a couple of games that aren't very good. We've got, um... Uh, Powerpuff Girls, Bad Mojo Jojo, and Paint the Townsville Green. There's also a third game in this series that I don't have called uh, Battle Him, featuring Bubbles. Um, and these are power games based on the show. Uh, at this time, me and my siblings were into the Powerpuff Girls. Powerpuff Girls um, kind of comes off as like a girly show at first, but it really is good for pretty much anybody. Like this, it's, a, it's a very well-made show. And uh, these we were really into it at this point in time, but these games really just aren't very good. Like... Uh, music sucks, graphics kind of suck, uh, controls, like, aren't very good, like, like, you fly, you can fly around, but you have limited flight power, and that gets annoying, and, like, combat is awkward, controls are, like, not good, and it's just, it's just not good. Don't, 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 don't play these games. Um, yeah, my, these, those originally belonged to my sister, but they just kind of ended up in my possession, because, you know, I'm the guy who has all the video games. Uh, I also have Japanese Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal over here. Yeah, I might as well show you them just because I can. Uh, here is... They're called Pocket Monsters Kin, Jin, and... Uh, I forget. I think it's just called Crystal. Like, Kin, Jin, and, and Crystal, I think they're called. So here we go. Um, Pokemon Gold, uh, Pokemon Silver, and Pokemon Crystal. We'll get to the U.S. version in a little bit. Interesting logo on the back. I guess it's supposed to be a crystal. That's cool. Um, but, um, yeah, as you can imagine, these save batteries are dead. The thing with Pokemon Gold Silver Crystal is that they have an in-game clock, which is really cool, but it also drains the battery faster than your average Game Boy game. So they have to be replaced, like, every several years or so. Um, all right, now we're going to get to the boxed incomplete Game Boy Color games right over here. Let's check them out. 
Here is um, Detective Conan, and I don't ask me to tell you what the subtitle is. Um, but Detective Conan is a anime and manga series in Japan about a detective named Conan. And um, this uh, particular game has an English translation patch, which is why I own this. And um, yeah, it seems like it's some kind of like a puzzle solving, probably like adventure game, kind of like Deja Vu, I would guess. But like, you actually, there are sections where like you're controlling from an overhead view, like a sprite. Um, so it seems like a cool game. I'll check it out sometime. Uh, I, I'm not really familiar with the source material, but uh, seems a, seems like it could be good. And we have Dragon Warrior Monsters 2, Kobe's Journey. No, is this Kobe's Journey? Yeah, Kobe's Journey. There's also a, an ultimate version with, like, some different exclusive monsters. Again, this is, like, in the heart of the Pokemon craze. And, like, uh, Dragon Quest is, like, capitalizing on that popularity with their own thing. And I believe this was actually the last... No, it wasn't the last. This was one of the last... No, okay. This is the last Game Boy Color game ever made that was also compatible with the original Game Boy. That's what I'm remembering. And I really like this box art. This looks really cool and how it goes, like, under the Game Boy Color logo and stuff. I uh, definitely want to try this out sometime. Um, yeah, cool game there. Here we have... Uh, Grandia Parallel Trippers. So I love Grandia on the PlayStation. I've said that before. Um, this is a uh, spinoff of that game. And uh, I got this years and years and years ago, back when this was like super, super duper obscure. And like it was like hard to find any info on this on the internet. Like it would never come up on eBay, hardly ever. Uh, when it finally did, I snatched it up, and um, it's actually a pretty good game. Like, they had to change the combat a lot from Grandia on the consoles. It's very different than the games. Like, it actually uses, like, cards or something, but um, it has kind of like a catch-em-all kind of um, vibe to it. Again, like, Pokemon craze and everything, where you can collect a whole bunch of characters to join your party, like, from the original Grandia. And, you know, graphics and sound are well done, and a lot of good music from the Grandia game on PlayStation. The Grandia game, I called it. Uh, my friend, uh, Mr. Fribbles, a.k.a. Richard Davies, uh, ma helps make a translation patch for this game. I don't know, I don't think he did the, well, he doesn't speak Japanese, so I know he didn't do all the translation work, but, you know, he made the patch happen. I'm thankful for that, um, and I got to play it. I actually played it in Japanese and played with a script years ago, but there is a patch now, so check it out if you like Grandia. Here we have Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. This was the last ever Game Boy, game, game Boy Color game released in North America, I believe. And I think this is, like, actually an RPG of some sort, and supposedly it's pretty good. And, you know, I like Harry Potter. Who doesn't like Harry Potter? I mean, some people don't, but, like, most people like Harry Potter. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll check it out and see what I think. Uh, some people say it's good. It's probably not, like, one of the best Game Boy Color RPGs, but uh, it's interesting. Hexite, this was an early Game Boy Color title with a flashy cover. And uh, this is a game about, like, some kind of hex puzzle. It's not, doesn't seem to be very intuitive, like, pick up and understand kind of thing. But, um, yeah, I'll give it a shot sometime. Like, I kind of like puzzle games, and uh, there's a, uh, there is a uh, multiplayer to this with only one Game Boy, so that's pretty cool. Maybe I'll check that out with someone else who wants to check out a puzzle thingy. Ooh, here's a cool game. Kirby Tilt and Tumble. So this game has a cartridge a uh, little bigger than normal, I think. And it has tilt controls built in. So you actually have to play this on a Game Boy Color. It won't really work right on a GBA um, or anything like that. You have to have a Game Boy Color. And um, you basically move your Game Boy and like like flip it up to like flip Kirby up and jump and stuff. And it's really well done. This is a fantastic game. Really addictive. The controls are good and they work. And um, it's just it's kind of obscure now and like like you know, it's it's you can't really port it to that many systems because of the unique hardware and stuff. But um yeah, this is a this is a really cool underrated well maybe not underrated but overlooked Kirby game. Um, I was really surprised with how much I enjoyed it. Oh, here we here we're getting to some good stuff. The Konami GB collections. So these only came out in Japan and Europe. So I have the European versions, and these are special the European versions because this these versions are the only versions of these games that are colorized because originally they were like monochrome Game Boy games. This particular collect compilation has uh, Probotector, which is actually Operation C. It has Gradius. It has um, Konami Racing, which I think might might have gone under a different title before, and Ca the Castlevania Adventure, which is really not very good. But um, this is a really cool compilation, and uh, watch, I, uh, there is more to come, You see, as you can tell from the Volume 1. I do not own Volume 2. That's probably the worst of the four, but here's Volume 3. Uh, the main reason to get this one is because this is the only English version of Ganbari Goemon Sara, I think it's Sara Watare Ebisumaru or something like that. I'm probably pronouncing that slightly wrong, but um, that's a cool Goemon game. It's just called Mystical Ninja Star and Goemon on here. But uh, I beat that game. It's fun. It's a good Goemon game. Um, uh, and you got Poppin' Twinbee, which uh, actually got a remake on the PSP, so that version is probably better now. 
Um, but um, you got uh, Gutang Gatong and Bikers, which I think was Motocross something originally, but they changed the name for some reason. Uh, so that's Volume 3. And last but not least, one of the rarest games I own, probably, is um, Konami GB Collection Volume 4. This one has uh, Gradius 2, The Return of the Hero, which I think was like Nemesis 2 originally or something like that. Uh, Castlevania 2, Belmont's Revenge, which is probably the highlight. It's also got Antarctic Adventure and... Ye oh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Yee Are Kung Fu, which I talked about in the Famicom episode. And, uh, yeah, good stuff. I mean, Castlevania 2, Bel Belmont's Revenge, is a legitimately good game, unlike Castlevania The Adventure. Here we have more Konami goodness. It's Metal Gear Solid, which is, in Japan, it's Metal, Metal Gear Solid Ghost Babel, Babel, whatever you call it. And this is a surprisingly really good Metal Gear Solid game on Game Boy Color. Like, they reproduce the the type of gameplay you find on the console ones pretty well and pretty faithfully, and um, it's fun. Um, I don't think the story is as good as other Metal Gear games, but, you know... It's a legit Metal Gear game. Definitely check it out if you like those games. Here we have come to Pokemon Crystal. And so Pokemon Crystal basically takes gold and silver and makes them even better. Adds new stuff, like, adds an actual female playable character. Adds, like, a battle tower where you can, like, um... I don't know how to describe the battle tower adequately in a brief time. But, like, you can win cool prizes and, like, fight more competitive computer opponents. And, um, there's a lot of cool, like, uh, a, little, a few, like, quality of life improvements here and there. And, um... You know, it just it, it's really good. Pokemon Crystal is fantastic. Oh, actual animation just for the Pokemon when they appear in battle. That's great. And, I mean, I just love Pokemon Crystal. Like, it's it's, it's my favorite Game Boy Color game. Like, I, I don't think there's any exception. Actually, I have a boxed copy of Pokemon Trading Card Game here, which I already talked about a little bit before. But here's one that's even better. This is Pokemon Card GB2. So this has adds the Team Rocket expansion, which was the fourth card game expansion in the U.S. And also... It adds uh, a whole bunch of uh, Japan exclusive cards that were never even released in America, like the the vending machine series. It's called. So there's a lot of stuff in here that's not in the original game. Like the campaign is a lot longer, and there's just a lot more of it. And there's there's some quality of life improvements and stuff. And um, this is really fantastic. I don't know why this didn't come out in America, but this has an English translation patch now. Pokemon trading card game interests you? Then you should definitely check this out. Here is a. Uh... Star Ocean Blue Sphere, which I think is the only Star Ocean game that hasn't been released in the U.S. And, um, you know, Star, Star Ocean is, uh, uh, they're kind of like sci-fi JRPGs with, like, active battle systems, like, like, action battle systems. And, um, I can't say too much about Blue Spear specifically. Um, I, I think I saw recently, like, there, an English patch was released briefly for it, and then it got taken down for some reason, and it was, like, buggy or something. I don't know. It was weird. But, um, I'm kind of waiting for an English patch. Super Mario Brothers Deluxe. This takes the original Super Mario Brothers and the Lost Levels and puts them on one cart for Game Boy. Uh, kind of optimizes them from Game Boy, for Game Boy by kind of uh, shrinking the camera down, but that also makes them a little harder as well. And um, you got some cool um, extra modes and bonus features on here. Um, lots of stuff to print out on your Game Boy printer, and um, just a pretty cool little Game Boy Color cart. Um, you know, if you're just, like, looking to replay Super Mario Brothers again, uh, but you don't want to do the same old NES version, that's not a bad way to do it right there. Here is uh, Tales of Fantasia Narakiri Dungeon. This is, like, kind of a spin-off of a Tales of Fantasia, which kind of turned out to be its own series. Um... Uh, and, uh, I can't say too much about this. I think you play as the two main characters, and they can, like, swap costumes, like, to be different, rep resemble different Tales characters, or at least classes. Um, and, um, I don't really know what the story is like in this one. I haven't really played through it, but I think there's an English patch. I could be wrong. Um, here we have Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX. So I talked about Link's Awakening before. Um, this takes Link's Awakening, adds color, which makes it look a lot prettier, and also adds a bonus dungeon that wasn't in the original game based on color. And um, it's just a fantastic game. I mean, like, what else can be said? Um, you know, if you like Zelda, you haven't played that, what's what's wrong with you? <laughs> Zelda Oracle of Ages, and also Zelda Oracle of Seasons. Now, these were, like, the first Zelda games, I believe, that weren't made by Nintendo. These were actually made by Capcom. And these are not, like, versions of the same game. They're two different games, but you can play one and then start your save... Start the next... Whatever game you didn't play, like, if you start with Seasons, you start with Ages... You start with seasons, then you go to ages, or vice versa. You can continue with your data using the link cable, and like the dialogue will change accordingly because like one game happened before the other, and then there's like a special dungeon at the end for linking them up. I stupidly didn't do that, so I have to do this again sometime and like actually experience them proper. But yeah, these are really good Zelda games. Like um, I would argue that I mean I think Link's Awakening is a little better, like a little more straightforward. I don't know. 
like these these games add like some complex elements. Um, like Oracle of Seasons makes it so you can change the seasons, and Ages means you can travel through time. And those are pretty cool. Um, it's been a while since like I've played them. Like I don't know, they're good games. I don't think they're like the best Zelda games, but they're they're very good games for what they are. For definitely recommended if you like Zelda. Uh, here we got Toki Tori, which is a indie game, I believe. Um, it's made by Two Tribes, and um, seems uh, like a lot of love went in this one. The graphics and sound are really cool. I think. And this is kind of like a puzzle game, like an action puzzle game, where you're trying to get through each stage without dying, basically. And, uh, like, there's a bunch of obstacles and stuff. I haven't played it a lot, a little bit. I've played a little bit, and it seems really cool. Um, probably not really worth getting this version now, because there are better versions that are available and cheap, like on modern consoles. But, um, yeah, cool game, for sure, on Game Boy Color. Almost to the end now, we, we have uh, Warrior Land 2. It's actually got a standard Game Boy release, as well as a Game Boy Color release. Um, but this version is actually compatible with the original Game Boy, so there's not really any reason to get the original version anymore. But uh, Warrior Land 2 is kind of interesting because you actually can't die in this game. Like, the worst enemies will do to you is, like, inconvenience you. So this is this is actually kind of like a puzzle platformer in a way. Um, and, like So, like, there's boss fights, but the bosses won't kill you. They'll just, like, kick you out so, like, the fight ends and you have to go all the way back and, like, fight the bosses again after, like, a short detour. Um... But yeah, cool game. Like, there's a bunch of branching pathways that you can access by doing different things. Um, so, like, Wario games in general are the types of games where um, they're catered to people who want to go for 100% completion. Um, and so, um, yeah, uh, Warrior Land 2, I've beaten it. I actually beat it, like, a year ago. A little less than a year ago. And it's a good game. Uh, Warrior Land 3 is kind of more of the same, but, like, uh, I think better than 2 from what I hear. I actually haven't played through 3 yet, but... Um, uh, like, they added a world map, which is different. That wasn't in 2. And um, I think there's some new stuff. It's like it's It kind of, like, takes the same formula that 2 did and just kind of does it better, I guess, um, from what I can tell. And, um, yeah, you know, if what I've been saying about the Wario games sounds appealing to you, check them out. They're well-made games. Uh, and with that, that is it for Game Boy Color. And stay tuned, because coming up next will be Sega Dreamcast. Thank you for watching. I'm Sam Rice. Sam, have a great rest of your day.